Hey everyone, this is Christine with Left Side Art. Today I'm doing a portrait of Supergirl. Her name in real life is Melissa Benoist, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is a recent series that the CW put out. Uh, I watched this on Netflix and I really liked the way that this uh, photograph of Melissa was taken. And I'm using the new Inktense um, blocks and also the pencils. This is when I had a smaller set of the blocks and I liked them so much I ended up getting a full set. Um, these are basically little blocks of ink pigment and the blocks are really nice to use just uh, with a paintbrush and some water. I uh, either can scratch some of the block off onto these little wells that come in with the packaging or in a separate palette but a lot of times I just take the pigment right off the block with the paintbrush how I'm doing here and it works just fine. The canvas I'm using it's a canvas board it's 11 by 14 it's by Fredericks and it says it's archival watercolor canvas with hardboard core and I thought this would be a good surface to try these blocks on um, thinking it'd be like a watercolor. I did um, have some trouble with them because uh, it was like the color wasn't sticking to the board the way you would expect it to. And what I had to do in order to get her skin tone very smooth was layer a lot of the white either straight on her face or mix it in with some of the colors before I applied them to the surface. So I don't think I'll ever probably really use this board again for, with these uh, intense blocks and pencils, but I probably would have just saved myself a lot of time if I used watercolor paper, which I already know the intense perform very well on. But in the meantime, um, it's been a little while since I completed this painting and I just wanted to make sure that the ink tents weren't peeling up from the canvas or I wasn't having any troubles, you know, post doing this and it looks perfectly fine. So as long as you can lay down the pigment and, and get it to layer in the way that you want it, um, it It'll be just fine and everybody's technique's a little bit different. I layer a lot and maybe that was part of the problem. I don't know, but it wasn't even just her skin tone I was having trouble with. I was having trouble with um, her costume as well. I had to layer a lot of white in order to get it to be a bit more opaque and take the light layers that I wanted it to. But in the end, I really enjoyed um, painting this. It was therapeutic, it was good exercise. Uh, it took quite a while um, doing this painting. It took um, almost six hours, I think. And I, I certainly believe I would have gone a lot faster if I would have just used um, watercolor paper. And I like to use hot press paper when I do portraits um, just because it's super smooth and you can get, a, I think, a lot better uh, skin tones and the smoothness of skin, I should say. But if that's not your style and you have you know a different technique that works better with these intense blocks and pencils um, definitely let me know. I, I do like to use this paintbrush especially in smaller areas um, with these blocks because you can get a lot of detail. Um, when I use watercolor paper I can use the pencils quite a bit more to get detail but this canvas board had a lot more texture to it than I'm used to and the pencils it was just too rough. It wasn't um, laying down the way I wanted it to and so I just more or less stuck to the blocks for this um, portrait. And you can do an entire painting just with the blocks or just with the pencils. Um, a lot of people that I follow online um, use both just for ease of use. But this small set of, I think it's 24 blocks I'm using here, you can mix these and get almost any color you want. Uh, I really like them and you can buy them in the visual stock as well. So if you just want to try um, a small set, I think they go down as small as 12 in um, a package together for I think almost 12 or $13 on Amazon. So it's, it's not a bad price whatsoever. I wasn't too sure what to expect with um, the way the 
colors are written on the blocks. Barely see it in this video, but um, they're more or less just engraved on the blocks. And I figured if I'm putting a lot of water on this, I'm going to be wiping away the um, the name, or excuse me, the color of the um, the number of the color. So what I did is that I went and got little pieces of masking tape and taped around the bottoms of each of these blocks and hand wrote the numbers and then also wrote the numbers on the plastic pellet itself just so I can match it up. When I got my bigger set, I am not doing this. I think as long as you're careful and, and not picking up the end with the uh, number too much with your fingers, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Her face goes through a lot of different um, layers here. Some she looks very pale, sometimes she looks green or orange. It was, like I said, I had a hard time wearing this and it wasn't until about halfway through doing her face that I realized the trick was to really mix in this white and that's what I'm doing now. And then I can finally get the pigment to stick to this canvas board in a way that I would expect. In the end here, I, I'll show you off to the side in the background for the, I ended up putting like this bluish purple background in here and I didn't mix in a lot of the white because I actually wanted that texture that I was getting her face to be in the background. So I learned early on, uh, you know, what not to do on her face, but it was a technique I ended up using in the background. Her hair is uh, very blonde. This picture had a lot of um, contrast applied to it. Um, it was just some type of promotional photo I found online. Um, so I was just working to see what color I wanted her hair. If I wanted it more brown with a little bit of blonde highlights or if I want to stick true to the photo. I think I ended up going somewhere in between. And then just working on shadows on her face. Um, and it almost seemed like that as soon as I got an area of her face done that I really liked, if I went to put either a shadow or a highlight or change the tone a little bit, anywhere that my brush um, had stopped, you could definitely see the waterline. And I kept taking a mop brush and trying to blend it together. It would work a little bit, but then I had to be careful why I wasn't picking some of the pigment back up, which is strange for these ink tents um, to work that way because ink tents is ink. Once it's dry, it's dry. It's, it's not coming back up. I, I really do think I was just fighting with the surface because I don't have this problem whenever I use watercolor paper. Um, but I did dry it pretty quickly with a heat tool a couple of times. I was getting a little frustrated. Uh, it just It was taking a long time to dry too. So her face looks a little wonky <laughs> a few stages through here. Either the ones that looks really large or misproportioned and it was honestly because I was fighting with the shadows and the rosiness in her cheeks and the highlights and the way the light was casting. Um, it still, you can still see on the finished uh, photos, I'll have it again, some close-ups where it's just not exactly the way you would want a finished painting to look. Her face, I think, still has a few blotches here and there, but I try working that in with the background and, you know, kind of making it look like it's that style. I was purposely going for it, but uh, this was, you know, just for my private collection. I, I'm not going to give this to anybody. I'm certainly not going to sell it. It was good practice, though. Now I'm starting to work on her um, outfit here, or her costume. These reds were very pretty. They're very vibrant colors in this set. I definitely want to use these again in the future. I don't know if it was um, just the way the red is pigmented or you know what, what exact formula they use for these um, blocks, but I wasn't having too much problem with these as, as I was in her face and her hair and the blue in her uniform. This section actually went pretty quick in comparison. I mean, it is a smaller area too, but I just wasn't fighting with it as much. I was actually able to relax and enjoy um, this part of the painting.
Now that her hair and face had dried some more, I just went back through and try and tweaking some of the layers and getting some more depth with the shadows and the highlights. Now I'm working on her, the blue of the uniform, or her costume. I don't know exactly which one it's called, but. <laughs> and this is also where I had to end up mixing in some of the white to get it to stick or to layer. It just seemed like the ink wouldn't dry. Even though it was dry, it would lift back up the second water hit it. Um, I got, I think, maybe a little frustrated around the S with the um, yellow and the red with yellow out here in a minute, but um, it didn't come out as clean and crisp, but by this point I was basically, you know, just wanting to finish this up. I realized, you know, early on it was a mistake to use this board, but I was determined to <laughs> not waste my time and, and get this done. In this part of her uniform, I'm adding white um, for another reason, which is, is where a bit of light was hitting her from behind. And just like the reds, there were a lot of really pretty blues in this set of 24. You can get a lot of mixtures of different colors and it just it's a very nice set to have. I'm very impressed with these blocks and I've seen what others are able to do with these online as well. And I just, well, it's probably why I ended up getting the full set. Um, I just want to make sure I got all the colors. And I, I felt like I was going through um, certain colors more than others, of course. And I went to go to try to buy them open stock. And there was a sale where it actually worked out just to buy the full set rather than try to piece together additional blocks. Like I wanted a lot more whites and blacks to begin with, which I got separate, but um, some of the skin tones and things like that, I just, I got lucky, I guess. And I ended up getting the full set for um, a little bit less than what it would have cost me to piecemeal some of these colors back together. And this is back when it was still relatively fresh set for me. I've used these quite a bit since. And so I just use these as, you know, my backup to my full set now. But like I said, get a few, get the 12 piece, you know, or just a few here and there. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Definitely get a couple of white. Uh, that white really just makes some of these colors act so differently. It's just, it's amazing in a good way. Now I'm just going to go through and finish tweaking uh, here and there. And I'm not going to put too much more work into this just because I know it's just going to go on my shelf and probably never see the, the light of day again. But I don't know. I am happy the way it turned out. I, I do like it. I do like looking at it. It's very vibrant. Um, and the close-up pictures at the end will show uh, how much color really is in her face. The, the lighting on it right now, I think, is kind of washing it out a bit. But it actually is very bright. I don't know. It's just it's a big pop of color on this small canvas. I don't know how else to describe it. I might paint this exact photo again sometime in the future, but on paper, just because, you know, it was good practice here. I know it didn't work out, but it's definitely something that I wouldn't mind um, doing again one day, just in better quality, so maybe I could share it with somebody. I'm only adding straight white here and there a little bit and it still is picking up some of the color that's on that palette so it's not completely a straight white. And because this was kind of, you know, it's it's Supergirl and it's already somewhat stylized. A little extra white here and there for highlights I don't think really hurt. I went through and, you know, of course put the dots and eyes and added some highlights to her lips. But and this is where on the background I was kind of just ready to call it done on this. And so I just want to get some color down. And in the original photo, this isn't too far away from the color that they had. It was very much so a Photoshop promotional type of photo I looked at online. 
And so I used some of that blotchiness to my advantage here and just gave it, you know, a little bit of a stylized, crazy background. That worked with her outfit and, you know, pulled her into the painting here. But, um, yeah, and that's about it. Really not too much more to say about this other than definitely recommend trying these intense blocks, but on watercolor paper. And I'll have links in the description um, below for these um, blocks, the pencils, this Frederick's canvas if you want to use it for other things, and then also the watercolor paper that I usually use, um, and also a Bristol paper. I, I use a Bristol paper with these as well that work just as well. But if you've liked this, please give it a thumbs up and comment below, and I will be sure to post more intense videos in the future. Thank you. Bye.